Welcome everyone to part two of our video series on coding and framing your canvases, your fine art canvases. Uh, today I'd like to pick up where we left off on part one, which is we have now triple coated this piece of, uh, of canvas, which is, if you remember is part of a triptych that we're installing for one of our clients. Uh, so it's all, everything's done here. It looks beautiful. It's not too uh, uh, too reflective. Remember, we, we cut down the, uh, the gloss of this by using the satin coat uh, for, the third, for the third and final coat here. So everything looks really good. No lines on it. Everything is fine. So today we need to begin talking about the framing of this. And uh, it, it requires a, like a three-part or so uh, series of steps, which I'd like to cover with you. The first one is going to be how do we determine on this canvas uh, where actually we're going to create our fold? How are we going to drape this canvas? And if you look here, you can see that we have uh, the canvas ends, the actual print itself ends here, and we've elected to have black borders for our client in this case. It could be a mirror wrap, but in this case, we're doing black borders, uh, and it's very distinct being able to see where one ends, where the, the actual print itself ends and the black border begins. So in order to get, the, uh, w since we are wrapping with the print turned upside down, we've got to determine exactly from looking at it from the back of the print where, where those lines lie, where, where we, the wrapping actually will occur. So there's a simple way to do it, and I'll, I'll uh, point it out to you now. What you need is basically a small uh, push pin, as they're called. They're, you know, almost everybody has these at home. Uh, if not, you buy them, buy them at, uh, through any, any sort of store, Staples or Amazon. And what you do is simply is find where the print actually ends and the black border begins and you stick your pin in at exactly that point. So that's what I've done here. And I push it down into my gator board, which remember we're using as a backing here. And once I determine that, I pick up the back here, pull out the pin, and you make an X, not a circle. I'll show you why later, why you make an X over that spot, which I've done. That X, the center of that X is right over that hole. And then I'll repeat the same thing with each uh, corner. Now, sometimes it's a little difficult if you have something black in your image to know exactly where, the, uh, where, it, uh, where that corner is, but I'm pretty darn sure it's right there. Having done this a number of times, now we pull that pin out. And again, I'll mark it as an X. All right. And I'll do the same on the other two corners here. I'll turn this around for us so that it's still in the frame. And this, that's for that corner. There's my X, and then final corner. Okay, so here we go. The final, the final X is here. Good. We've got them all marked now in four corners. I'll put this, uh, this pin out of, the, out of the way for now. And now I'm going to turn this thing over. I'm going to remove these tapes from the board, just get them out of the way so they don't interfere with anything. Good. Got those out. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to flip this over. Now, if you recall in the first video, I mentioned to you that 
Key to all of this is keeping your work surface free of dust and dirt, which could end up scratching your, your canvas. So as I do this, I'm just going to make sure that my work surface is entirely clean using this camel hair brush. All right, I've gotten the area nice and clean uh, with my camel's hair brush, and we're ready for the next step. So here I go, I'm going to just flip over this canvas uh, as so, and I have my four X's on the back of my canvas that we previously did. So now I just take my ginormous ruler, of course we do large prints, so this, uh, you, you obviously don't need a ruler this size, but uh, put your ruler exactly on the intersection of the uh, X's here and simply draw a line with a pencil or a pen, whatever. I have one line done. Now I'll go on the long side here and get that and try to get as, uh, make it as exact as you possibly can. All right, I've got my X's all lined up, so now we're ready for the Next line, good. Now I'll just rotate my canvas a bit. And we can do the last two sides. And once again, just line up your X's, make sure that you've got a, as good a match as you possibly can. And here we go with the next line, and then the final one coming right up. Good. We're done with our perimeter of, of the uh, canvas here. And uh, we're ready now to put the frame on it to make sure that we have a good fit. All right, we are uh, set now to talk about frames themselves. I'm a little bit of a digression, if you will. Uh, we tend to make our own frames here at, at um, Let's Pick a Fine Art Photography. But when we're doing canvases, I like to order my frames from a company called uh, Jack Richeson and Company. That'll be down in our uh, description for this video. All the tools I use, everything that we use here uh, will be, I'll give you a link to. Uh, we, we like them because they really have exacting standards. Uh, so what we do is we order frames for our canvases from them and you notice that these frames are very uh, cut highly detail. They're designed to fit together and uh, you'll also notice that in these, there is a flat edge, which is the back of the frame, and there's a rounded edge here so that when you put your canvas over this, uh, it doesn't create a, an unattractive line. Uh, it really makes the canvas look nice and smooth, and you can stretch the canvas really nicely so it's taut. When you, uh, and, and when you do that, by the way, you may need a small mallet to just make sure that it taps together real well and you get a very, very uh, tight fit. So here's one of their frames fully assembled and you can see uh, there's a nice miter here, nice 45 degree uh, angle here. I, ha I always put a brace uh, in, in any canvas. These canvases are 20 by 40. so. I have a, a brace right in the center, but also you'll notice they offer these corner pieces which are wonderful to use because when you have a canvas up, humidity changes with the seasons, uh, as, uh, uh, so you may want to tighten these a little bit to get the canvas stretched. If it ever buckles a little bit, uh, you, should, you have this uh, way to adjust it and make sure that the canvas stays nice and taut. Okay, so 
with that said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm taking this, uh, this canvas, which is 20 by 40, I mean this uh, frame, which is 20 by 40. I'm going to put it the wrong side down for a moment, just to make sure that my frame fits perfectly within the lines that I drew just a few moments ago. And when I do that, I see that the, uh, the, it, the thing fits quite well. Now you, you might ask, uh, how does that exactly happen? I'm gonna give you one tip right now. And that is, when you get your frame done, or you think you have your frame done, use a metal square to make sure that your frame is exactly square. Put that on there and make sure that all four corners are square. When that's done, then you know that it will fit your line, within your lines uh, quite perfectly and then you're basically ready to wrap. So as I said, Perhaps the most problematic part of uh, doing wrapping canvases are the corners. And I'm about to show you why. So here's, here's a uh, sample. I just put together a couple of um, pieces of, uh, of the, same, the same frame that we are using uh, in, in this video. And I'm going to show you what I consider to be a significant problem when you try to do corners. So here we are ready to do our corners. I've left myself, you notice, enough room to be able to do this. Uh, once you start producing your corners here like this, and you try to bend it over, you end up with a very thick uh, situation here that is, is uh, very distracting. I think it, it distracts from the art of the canvas itself when it's so bulky like this, it's hard to get a tight fit. Even if I use uh, my stretcher pliers, it just does not work as well as it could. So I would like to propose a solution for this. All right, we're back here with the actual canvas that uh, we've been using throughout this video, both parts of the video. And here's the, here's the corner. Uh, right here. I don't have a whole lot of overlap on this side just based on the uh, length of the canvas uh, that we're using here, but I have a lot of overlap over here. And I want to avoid that bunching up effect that makes, I think, is so unattractive. So I'm uh, going to uh, give credit to John Fast for how, uh, on how I learned this method. Um, and here goes. Very, very simply, we have to remove some of the waste from here. So you notice this diagonal that we have the, the miter cut right here. What I'm going to do is holding this nice and secure, I'm going to make a cut halfway up that miter. So here we go. Just I'm going to follow that miter line and make a cut halfway up. Then I'm going to take this, that cut there, and I, you have to use the sharp scissors for this, but I'm assuming you have that. I'm going to make this cut like that, right up to the end, and I'm going to remove that piece from the equation. So we have that, that kind of uh, a look here. In fact, I'm gonna trim that just a smidgen more to, uh, to mimic the, uh, the um, miter cut. All right, so we've now cut this piece off. The next thing I want to do is make sure that the line running along here is, is fairly well creased. It doesn't have to be a big crease, but I, I'm just going to, to give me a visual reference, I'm just going to run that crease down here. And I'm going to go out about a half inch from the frame itself, and I'm going to make a cut about a half inch all the way to that crease like that. That's not quite straight. All right, let me make that a little straighter. Good. And then I'm going to just simply remove this piece. There, cut that out. So now I have uh, something that looks like this. All right, and the final cut that we have is, you'll notice there's a little tab here. And 
cut it from where it starts to overlap the frame, where it comes off the frame, to this corner right there. So I just, I like to pre-fold it a little bit just to make sure that I've got it down. And I'll just, um, I'll do that. I'm sorry if my fingers are blocking it, but this is the best I can do here. I'm just making that little crease. And now I'm going to make that cut along that crease line like that. It just gets a little bit more out of the way. Don't pull on your canvas, just cut it as you do it. So there, there's that final cut. And now we're ready to fold. So I'll get things out of the way. And what you do is you bring in your, your uh, canvas and get a nice, get, get the corner really nice in there. And then you bring it up, making sure that your, your, your edge is nicely along the edge over here. And then you're going to lay that down. So now look at the difference, especially once I pull it taut, between all that canvas that we saw previously when we don't have a corner like this and now. We have, we're going to have a nice, a nice sharp corner here. In fact, I'll put it tight and I'll get it even tighter. All right. And you'll have a really, really good looking corner. It's at the top of the canvas note, by the way, not at the sides. It's on the top of the canvas, so it won't show. And uh, I think everyone will be real happy with it. The final thing that you do, of course, is once that corner is made, uh, I will keep on stapling up along the sides of this canvas. And when I get to here, I will put uh, two or three staples in the corner to make sure that that's held down real flat. Now, I'm going to switch this for a moment, this canvas, which we're still working on, and put up a finished canvas to give you an idea of what that stapling looks like. So here is an example of a finished corner. I have three staples in here, nice and tight, a really tight corner. It doesn't show when you look at it on the front. Everything is nice and nice and neat all the way around. 